Okay, she is the Emmy-nominated actor who produced the ACLU documentary, The Fight, which you can see in select cinemas on video and on demand starting Friday, July 31st. That's tonight for those watching tonight. Kerry Washington. Kerry, thank you so much Hi. for doing this. My first question to you is, did you feel the earthquake uh, today? And I don't mean the thing that got me out of bed. I mean that Trump said, <laughs> Trump said uh, he tweeted that he wants to delay the election. Uh, you're a thought leader in this country now. What is your reaction to that? Um, you know, not to jump right into the film, but I do have to jump right into the film because <laughs> one of the things that um, that happened for me you know, I've always had such a great deal of respect for the ACLU and have always, you know, had a really good working relationship with them. But what I came to realize is every single thing that we are worried about right now, LGBTQ rights, women's right to choose, um, police brutality on black bodies, immigrants' rights, voting rights. When you read something horrible happening in the paper, you can be guaranteed that the ACLU is on it. They are at the forefront of this fight of battling the attack on civil rights and civil liberties. So my first response, honestly, when I read it was like, oh, I bet that Dale Ho, who runs the voting rights division at the ACLU, is going to drop out of some of our interviews for the movie today because he has work to do. Um, and right. I'm grateful that he's on the ground doing that work. Right. Well, they sure need defending the ACLU because they also d d defend people who are abhorrent. And a lot and I think a lot of times on the left, we forget about free speech in the interest of uh, not being offended. And I think it's great that someone like you gets out there and says, yes, the ACLU is our friend, even though they defended the Nazis in Skokie. They defended people at Charlottesville. They, they defended the Westboro Baptist Church. I mean, they walk the walk. They really do. You know, people, I try to remind people that there hasn't ever been a president since the inception of the ACLU 100 years ago. There's never been a president who hasn't been sued. They've sued every president, Republican or Democrat, um, because they really are invested in the rights of all people. But I'm also, I'm very proud of how we deal with the whole Charlottesville situation in the film. We really, um, we ask them about it. We, we are invited into their introspection. And they're doing a lot of conversations within the organization right now around where they stand um, and making sure that they're also factoring in access to power when they choose their clients. You know, they believe in free speech, but when they decide which clients they will work with, um, they're, they're having really complicated, nuanced conversations about that. And we were able to capture some of that for the film, which I'm really proud of. Yeah, well, you should be. It's a great film, and I hope everybody gets a chance to see it uh, in some platform. And we have lots of time to do that. So you should see that, That's right. that movie. That's right. I know, I know everybody's watching Black is King this weekend. I am too. But when you're done with Black is King, <laughs> then you can watch the fight. OK, so <laughs> it, uh, it was uh, John Lewis's funeral today. Um, uh, Aaron, this show airs tomorrow, but it was today, and I know you knew him. You must have had a lot of thoughts and emotions, and uh, uh, President Obama spoke, of course, to no one's surprise. He was great. Uh, Bill Clinton spoke. George Bush spoke. Not someone you'd expect, but uh, to me, I thought that was a good sign in America. We have to... I did, too. You did, too? I did. I really did. I felt like... Um, you know, this idea of being able to have conversation across the aisle, the idea of respect and civility, um, we are talking at each other and not with and to each other. And, um, and that is not how we're going to get to real change in this country. But you know, there are people who will say, well, it's, it's not right, because George Bush's father did the Willie Horton ad, and, and George Bush, you know, was not a great friend of the African-American. What do you say to that? Um, I get it. I get it. But I think that <laughs> it's funny, like, it's funny how, how, you know, things can seem rosy when you're, in, when you're faced with... <laughs> with new circumstances when it comes to presidents. But I marched, you know, I protested Bush's presidency. I, I protested the war. I protested the cuts to federal funding for the arts. I still think that when a great civil rights leader passes, 
and somebody from the other side of the aisle says, I, I want to come and show respect, that that is something that I welcome. Um, and I welcome it because we have to restore the Voting Rights Act. And, and I want to be in conversation with legislative officials, with elected officials who are willing to step outside their comfort zone to do what is right for all people. And just staying away and keeping this huge divide is not how you guarantee rights for all Americans. Yeah, I think that's a great point also about we, with Trump, we have perspective now, you know, that's about right. people we don't agree with fully, but you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really help anything to point fingers and say, you're not, you're not nearly as good as me. So, you know, you have to just be banished, but okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Joe Biden, he says, announced yeah. the other day that, uh, he is going to choose his vice president, uh, in the coming week. And we may find out who that is very soon after. Uh, any thoughts on that? Uh, what, who is, who was your druthers choice? Who do you think it's going to be? I think it's going to be Kamala Harris. You do? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, she, I mean, for a, a, a number, I, I would bet any money I have left, which is very little now after they took away <laughs> half my way to make a living and, oh, you don't even want to know the stories. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I think it's going to be Kamala Harris. I mean, she's a law and order prosecutor. That. Yeah. answers a lot of what Trump is trying to sell on his side about mm -hmm. unrest in the streets and she's a black woman and I, I just think she's and I like her I think she's good I mean she yeah. made some mistakes in the campaign but I think she's good yeah I agree I think that would be an excellent choice I think Kamala would be an excellent choice I think Stacey Abrams would be an excellent Susan choice. Rice was on our um, show she'd be great yeah I love her yeah I love her these are really really powerful strong women. Well, we love you. As I said to you before we started, you keep getting to be a bigger star, but you keep doing our show, which I can't say for all the big stars out there. Like Joe Biden used to do our show, then he became vice president and he forgot all about us. But you are true blue. I thank you so much. Congratulations on your 10 Emmy nominations yesterday and uh, good luck with the film. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.